to episode 110 of the Concealed Taco Dudes podcast. That was your radio voice. This yeah, is that. my radio voice. <laughs> 110. You know what that was, reminds me of? What does it remind you of? H110. I was thinking the same thing. A great magnum pistol powder that you can use in, well, you can use it in a lot of stuff, right? So you can use it in 500 magnum all the way down to the 300 blackout supersonic. Hmm. It's a useful powder. Yes, very. Okay. I, I think of reading like Elmer Keith and... Oh, yeah. If you if you have a revolver and you want it to get up and go, H110 is a powder that you should take well. a look at. Huh. Do you know what its twin sister's name is? Dorothy. <laughs> 296. I was actually going to say 296, and yes. I actually use more 296 than I do H110. They are the same powder. From so. different manufacturers? No. Same. What's the well, point? Like Win- so one of them is Winchester 296, one of them is Hodgson H110. Okay. Same company, though. But it's the same company. Oh, I got and you. And they have said that it is the same powder. But strangely enough, you look at load data, and one will have like a point something grains higher or lower than the other. It's tradition. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Instead of just publishing the same data, because they, they've yeah. come out and said it, it is the same powder. Yeah. Huh. So twin sister. Both excellent powders, even though they're the same. Even though it's <laughs> so, if you're a reloader out there and you just can't find that 296, maybe you should buy some H110. Yeah, or vice versa. Good well, and in this know. day and age, you buy what you can get and you figure out what it'll work for later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, awesome. So we've got a few of us here today. We've got Gene, who brought us in, a uh, gunsmith extraordinaire. Can't leave that back one. off the mountain. Back off the mountain, he has been traipsing through the woods, hunting. Hunting, hunting, and all I got was cold and hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but your wife got something, right? Yeah, my wife, she got her uh, her first animal with a muzzleloader. She got a cow elk, about 50 yards. Oh, nice. Made an excellent yeah. shot on it. it. It was very good. She showed you up this year. Shh. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. So I'll be going back up for the muzzleloader hunt for bull elk, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Cool, yeah. cool. And uh, we've got Taco here, and I am Jason with Concealment Solutions. Let's jump into the sponsors really quick. Okay, NOEBulletMolds.com, the makers of the finest bullet makers around. The makers bullet- of the finest bullet makers? Yeah, they are the <laughs> oh. best bullet well, maker. Makers? Yeah, yep. Well, a mold would be a bullet maker. Yeah. Yeah, huh. yeah that's how Al sometimes signs his, his name. It's like Al Nelson, bullet maker. Maker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice. That works. That so, works. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Cool. We are here at the studio, and I showed Gene some must-haves today. We were All walking kinds through. of goodies. Yeah, there's so much <laughs> stuff. So just as a quick FYI, if you are local, then you may consider taking a look at the powder selection. He does have a few powders here. I'm I'm eyeballing the LRT powder. It's a 338 Lapua powder. I need to buy some, but, uh, <laughs> man, I've been spending too much money on all kinds of stuff lately. <laughs> so they have powder for locals. Uh-huh. They also have bullet or ingot molds that I was showing, Gene. They are some beautiful ingot molds. Like the, these things, there's ingot molds, and then there's ingot molds. <laughs> and these are the latter. These are absolutely beautiful. Uh, you know, Al, his crew, they do some beautiful work. And these molds, these aren't the things that you get from from the other makers. These things, they've got, they're pre-marked. Yeah, it's engraved into the mold, the different alloy types like lino, wheel weights, whatever, pure lead. So that when you make your ingot, you can just take a nail and circle it. You know, I thought of something better. Mm. Take a cut-off arrow, like an aluminum arrow, Mm -hmm. and then just use that to circle whatever you're... Just pound it and stamp it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that works. super easy to mark what it is by using one of these fancy yeah. ingot molds. And they got different sizes. They got, what, one pound, two pound, four pound. Yep. Was and there another can, size? No, that's it. That was it. But you can use, because he wanted them to be able to fit inside of a pot, like a leaf pot. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. you can fit. Really, really, so really So why adorable. would I want that instead of just my cast iron cornbread pan? Mm, the cast iron <laughs> cornbread thing would they work. They both work. I it's mean, just nicer to use. <laughs> yeah. It's it's why would you want to drive a Cadillac versus a Cavalier? Yeah, they both get you the same place. They both right? work. 
Yeah, but neither of them are very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time, maybe. Yeah. But, okay. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. Cool. Anyways, right. so use coupon code FLT001, and it'll save you 10%. Awesome. Oh, and we I was going to say, he did get a bunch of Lee stuff in, so there's dyes. Yeah. So it's he's, a, he's got a lot of stuff back there. Yeah. We are kind of... Drew, we had to mop up some of the drool. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Nice. Black Ice Coatings. BlackIceCoatings.com. Awesome gun finishes. He'll dip your bicycle frame. Your, he did some shocks. Your helmet. He just yeah. uh, coated some shocks. Had those on Instagram today. Beautiful. Angel covers. <laughs> yeah, so I have I have a question for Gene. So this coating on this... Is it like a some kind of a nickel plating? Yep. So yep. That's an old nickel plating. What this is because yeah, it's an old on Ivor Johnson radio. <laughs> old Ivor Johnson uh, thirty two Smith and Wesson short. So it's a little pea shooter. Fine yeah. piece of equipment there. Yeah. So I was wondering, is it possible to re like you know re nickel it? Well. Get the nickel off and then put oh, something yeah. else on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can strip well, the nickel off As you can uh, see, chemically. half of it's coming off already. Yeah, and that's, so. well, that's, and that's why I would want to. Is <laughs> Yeah, it's it's no big deal. You just toss it in a bucket of, of de-nickeler and... Uh, oh, that just, there is a de-nickeler? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. In fact, I've I've got a bucket of it at the house. I don't know if it's still good, but... Um, I don't know how we can find out. Yeah, we can drop it in there and see what happens. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> um, and just, but, yeah, it'll it'll just chemically strip it. And, um, and then you ought to get it Teflon. Oh, totally. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you should do? Because that Teflon has like a nice blackish blue it color. Does. It does. It's an attractive it, it, it finish. It holds up well and it has yeah. functional qualities as well. You know, my uh, one of my named guns, I have two, uh, has that Teflon finish. Uh-huh. And I get so many comments on it. It is such an attractive gun. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's it's very functional. It's like attractive and functional. Yeah. yeah. Unlike it, That's this the current world. state of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It works. I mean, it. you know, if you get lost and you need a reflector to signal a, a <laughs> plane, <laughs> you've, you've got yeah. that. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, yeah, I might have to take this down and see. If you're not following Black Ice Coatings on social media, you ought to because they post some amazing work that they do. I've never seen... Well, I've never been disappointed with anything I've got from him, and I've accrued a fair bit of stuff that... I've, uh, I've had him do some things. and uh, for me. You know, my favorite is obviously the black ice, but he does yeah. all kinds of coatings, all kinds of dips. Yep. Um, you know, you, coating. Yeah, I'll say if you have a, a 9 mil like, AR-15, something with a blowback, yep. those get so dirty when you're shooting them, especially yeah. suppressed. Oh, yeah. And having that black ice coating is nice for cleanup. Yeah. My, it just kind of wipes off. My, they run better. They're easier to clean. Yeah. They look better. My forty five uh, AR pistol has got a little bit of everything. Well, I didn't mm. I didn't have anything dipped on it, the hydro dipped, but it's got a gray Cerakote on the outside. The barrel's Teflon coated, and the bolt carrier group and the whole inside of the upper is all Teflon coated. Nice. Buttery cool. smooth. It's nice. Yeah. Anyway, check out Black Ice Coatings. Uh, give them a call. Tell them you want it slickery. Yep. Slickered. Slickered it. Slickered up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Utah Air Guns. Yes. I've been purposely avoiding stepping into that shop. <laughs> like I said earlier, I have my my pockets are empty. My wallet is empty. It's like an opium den. You go in and you just can't ever leave. <laughs> yeah. You know, my well, every wife... time I go and I walk out with something, a big box. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it's just a box, that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah the it's, box uh... has something expensive inside. <laughs> yeah. Usually. They got but... nice stuff. Mm-hmm. My wife told me the other day, she says, Gene, for my birthday, let's go to Utah Air Guns and shoot on their range. Nice. <laughs> and I said, can we not? <laughs> Last time I was there, I almost walked out with two grand worth of guns. No, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds yeah. like a good time. Yeah, yeah it, it is. It, it is a good time over there. I love shooting their, the, you know, the air guns they've got on the range. Yeah. Ton of fun. You know, if you're local, go there for a date night. You know, yeah. they've got yeah. some, some rentals and, you know, you, it's just and a... And they've got nice stuff that they'll let they you They do. Shoot. 
They have some very nice stuff. Yeah, yeah, just it, start asking them questions about the yeah. fancy ones, and then they'll say, "Hey, you want to shoot one?" Yeah, it's yes. It's the answer not, is always yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bring your credit card bill <laughs> because you're gonna want one. <laughs> yeah, I I still man, I shoot my FX Crown all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, amassed quite the the count. Let's call it the count. Nice, nice. So you've been notching the stock, you know, cutting a little notch in there for. <laughs> No, there's not enough space for that many notches. <laughs> nice. I've got you know, a beam in my shed that's got a tally on it. <laughs> you know, I saw, speaking of tallies, um, years ago, not too long ago, I saw a German gun. Um, you know, it was probably late 1800s, early 1900s. And it, they had a silver pin for each animal that they killed. And they had a little cutout, you know, a little silver inlaid cut out of you know a, a roe deer and I don't know, wild boar was. and something oh, and they'd cool. have a little silver pin next to it and it was the there was one line that had i don't know 30 or 40 people these pins? little pins stick, <laughs> stick people <laughs> i thought about that and i thought that'd be kind of useful you know i have like <laughs> but uh, that's really cool yeah so anyway but yeah nice. utah air guns definitely yeah. a great place to go yeah yep. Check Lots them out, utahairguns.com, and use the code AIRCANDY for free shipping and turret stickers. Yep. Okay, have you got feedback for us today? I do. Today I got some feedback. All right. We got one. We, we, we've we gotten a few of them wishing Carl well. Yes. So I will. Anyways, Spencer writes in. He says, uh, well, he also gave some links to uh, regarding last episode where we talked about Noah's science project oh, yeah. shooting through walls. And there's uh, an article, so I'm going to send that to Noah. And uh, he says, I hope Carl's doing better. There was a p- picture of me using his head as an armrest back at the 2013 Gun Dudes Mag 40. <laughs> that was one of my favorites. Godspeed and best wishes for his recovery. Nice. P.S. A question for Taco. Do your high point 10 millimeter mags fit after you put it in the high tower bullpup chassis. With mine, that chunky base pad contacts the back of the magwell and keeps it from fully seating. I was curious if that was something you had a problem with too and how you dealt with it if you did. Don't you have a Dremel tool? Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Bust out the Dremel. Well, it's a high point. You can just hit it with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how you seat the mag. Yeah. <laughs> the mallet. You smack the bag well with a hammer and then you can seat the mags. It works every time. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm mine, kidding. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Although, if you did, you still have a lifetime warranty. Yeah. True. So, abuse included, I, I believe. Huh. I've seen them fix some pretty crazy things. Yeah. Well, not fix. We just replace the gun. Yeah, they're not yeah. going to fix it. And that takes that's, not, that's not worth they, their time. They have the best customer service of any company I've ever dealt with. Wow. Bar none. That's saying something. It It, it is pretty good. Nice. I got I call, spare parts for free when I... Robbed them from a, that one high point. Yeah, yeah. Scene. They'll send you yeah. parts. Yeah, they'll, they'll send you a part. You're like, hey, I need this part. And they'll say, okay. I called them up. I said, hey, I need this bolt handle. And they said, okay. Need some slings? No. Just <laughs> just the bolt handle. You need these other things? No. I mean, you can send me whatever, but <laughs> this is all I need. She sent me a whole pack. I needed one. She sent me a dozen. Huh. <laughs> it was Okay. Nice. It took too much time to, to open pull one out. <laughs> I guess it's more cost yeah. effective yeah. than just. But I, you the whole I have thing. shot that ten millimeter the high, high point. point. Yeah. yeah, and mine mine works. Is it a pistol or carbine? No, it's a carbine. Oh yeah, those are nice. It, it's and it's I mean, in a bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, hang on. You've gone too far. Credibility just went down the toilet. When I say nice, (laughs) those are functional guns. That's that's a functional weapon. I I I have thought about acquiring one myself for its functionality, not because I like it, but because it's it's functional. I I have been thinking <laughs> that I would like to get a ten millimeter carbine. Yeah. Um, maybe, well, maybe that's the one to look. It's at. It's kind of limited know. in choices. You got the yeah. Chris rifle or pistol. Yeah. You've got a and, couple of AR versions. That, right. Yeah, a couple. But the some ARs, are good and some are terrible. Yeah. yeah. So you, you'll need to do some reading up on it. CMMG has their ten millimeter. I think it's a. I would, a I would try blowback that. Or blowback. Yeah. So yeah, that one is just, probably the one I would go with. 
Yeah. It it gets kind of tricky because with blowbacks, it's designed for you know certain kind of like bullet weights and pressures and stuff. Yeah. And mm-hmm. with ten millimeter, there's such a you can load them light or you can load them heavy. Yeah. And yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The high point seems to work fine, though. Yeah. Well, it's a high point. Yeah. And they are affordable. So what if you ever That is it. something that is. we can say about high points. They are Just affordable. remember, the high point has that gooey, sticky cheek. Oh, You remember right. that? <laughs> you guys <laughs> earlier. Yeah. The, 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 it's like the, a gel pad for your cheek. Oh, yeah. Wrap it with duct tape, and then you don't notice the stickiness of the gel pad. Yeah. <laughs> you just get the stickiness of the duct tape, uh, the duct which tape. is better. Which is better. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, like, it actually is better than that stickiness. It's like an old fruit snack that's been sitting on the yep. sidewalk. <laughs> yep. It kind of is. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Man. So back to the question of uh, that he had. Oh, have you yeah, had an issue? Sorry. Yeah, so I have not had that issue. Mine works fine. Yeah. Mm. So you may have to bust out the Dremel and I don't know. Good luck. Wonder, Let us know wonder, how it goes. Maybe maybe try a different brand of magazine. Is there no, a like a high or? point high point magazine? Oh, yeah, I guess instead of the yeah. high point mag. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> kind of limited. I forgot what we were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then he says PPS. I think uh, is that what you say? When it's, Post postscript. Yeah. When two. Or is it PPSS or is it PSS? No, because it would it would be postscript script. So it's post postscript. So PPS is correct. Okay. You are correct, Spencer. He (laughs) says, it was also great to hear Russian Tom back on again. It would be great if you rounded out the the dude's part of the concealed talk of Red Tom. Yeah, Red Tom. (laughs) It was fun having Tom. Tommy the Blade. Yeah, it was, that was fun. It's good times. Yeah. All right, and Kevin C. writes in, and he also sent some links to the testing of the sheetrock with different ammo. Hmm. And uh, Tom Gresham's video. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. He says, now I'm really mad. And I think he's referring to the soulless guns. <laughs> <laughs> we did you an know. episode on oh. soulless we, guns We all had soul. five guns with no souls. Okay. My yeah. first one was pretty much every striker-fired polymer pistol. Well, I was going to say Glock and HK. There you yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. So but there's it's probably some others. Them. Anything Taurus. M and P's. <laughs> anything Taurus. <laughs> like anything. Yeah. <laughs> anything. <laughs> so. Anyway, let's, let's yeah, he, I want to see what, how we made him mad. <laughs> he says not really, but I kind of agree, kind of disagree on soulless guns. I propose that any gun you carried and it protected your life by carrying, not necessarily actually showing or shooting, has soul. Even if it is made from glass filled nylon. I like my M&Ps, my first duty-sized pistols, and still in the rotation. By the way, the ones I shot at Mag 40 and Mag 80 with. But polymer guns don't have inherent soul. I will say, it's, yeah, and we talked takes, about that. It takes a lot, yeah. to shove that soul into a into polymer, a polymer gun. gun. Yeah. I I agree. It takes like battle scars yep. and life experience. It's, it's got to have a lot of history. It, yeah. But, but I've even seen them. then, but even then, it's still. Let's take the Glock 19 for example. You have one that's been through thick and thin with you, battle worn, or whatever. Let's say you've lost it. You go to the store and you get another, one, and it'll be the exact same thing. <laughs> yes, except if you've had one that has gone into battle with you yeah. or saved your life. Yeah, I would say that that one is unique and specific. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, for example, when a gun is used in, like, say, a murder, yeah. like a famous murder, and uh-huh. then all of a sudden that gun goes up in value because yeah. even if it's or if like... Or it was carried by yeah. Wyatt Earp or something like something that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's got a soul now. Oh, yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. And that's that's what makes a gun valuable. What was that Might one? Be there was like a and tacos example, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there was a what was it the G- Gifford gun or something? There's a Anyways. like the Gabby Gifford gun. No, no, no not no. Gabby. What's her name? Oh, like I can't the, the the congresswoman. That's... No, I'm not talking about that. But, oh, uh, anyways, hmm. Hmm. there's like a a gun with a story. But all right, we'll keep we'll keep going. And he says, my dad went halvesies with me to buy my first gun, a Remington 870 Wingmaster wood and blued steel 12-gauge pump. Nice. It has soul. Oh, yeah. My P7, 1911, Uberti, 1866 Replica, and Henry 22 Golden Boy all have souls. Now, I'm just going to do a shout-out to, to Henry Rifles again. Their wood on their guns, I, 
I always, if, if there's a Henry at a store, mm-hmm. I want to pick it up and look at the wood. Yeah. They put some nice wood on their guns. They so. do. I, I just held today a single shot because they, they, they've they been doing a bunch of single shot rifles. Mm-hmm. And it was in, uh, was it uh, 450 Bushmaster? Oh. And it had the most beautiful wood stock. Interesting. So, you know, and I had to touch it and, and stroke well, sure. it gently, you know, <laughs> just because it was so dang beautiful. I, I didn't even want a gun in that caliber, but I was tempted to buy that. Yeah. And you it's know. because that, that awesome wood stock, it draws you in. Yes. Oh, yeah. It has beauty. It has soul. So One you, of the Thompson Centers that I bought years ago, I bought only because of the stock. It yeah. was a, an inline Thunderhawk. I saw it on the rack, and I said, let me see that gun. And he's like, the muscle loader? And I was like, I don't care what it is. Let me see it. <laughs> let me see that. <laughs> and it it's had calling the, out to me. <laughs> yeah, it had the most beautiful piece of wood. And I said, yep, I'll take it. Nice. What is it again? <laughs> <laughs> what does it shoot? <laughs> I yeah. bought a guitar that way. I don't even play the guitar. Oh, nice. But you know how a place that makes kosher food, they have like a rabbi in there that blesses it. That's what makes it kosher, oh, yeah. right? yeah. Well, Henry has a guy that injects soul into every gun <laughs> as it's coming down that the That sounds like line. some Harry Potter stuff there. <laughs> it's true. Look it up. Yeah. I, that's what I read. I mean, that's... Uh, There's a guy who, who puts soul into the stocks. His name's Amos. Amos, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. He has a beard, too. Yeah. Well, you'd, you'd have to. <laughs> In that job, you have to have a beard that goes at least to your belt. And he does a little yeah. dance. And the soul enters the gun. I think, I think it, uh, the soul is worked in as the stock is polished. Unless it's oiled and broke. Yeah. That Man. could be, too. But I, seriously, I wonder where they get their wood because... I'm wondering they, why you guys are smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the, Henry stocks. Like they, they you use always beautiful gotta look wood. At them. Henry Henry does a good job on everything they do. They yeah. do. They do an excellent job. I and, and I'm kind of the minority. I'm one of the very few people that I personally don't like how a, a Henry feels. But I'm like the only person that that feels that way. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they're, they're, the quality. Yeah. Is excellent. Their yeah. customer service, while not up to uh, uh, high point standard. high point standard, <laughs> it, they are very good. Very good. So yeah, nice. I, need the Henry equivalent. <laughs> do you, do you need a new stock with that? You know, you, you, what you have a dent in your stock? Yeah, let actually, me, uh, me, let me build you a new stock. Put Amos, some soul Amos into it. Put some soul into yeah. it, and then we'll send it. Yeah. yeah. And if, if Henry was high point, <laughs> yeah. Or at least had high point. I had customer. high point standards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe they would, they were they were saying <laughs> this. <laughs> oh, the oh, irony, geez. the sacrilege. <laughs> All right, there's one more <laughs> message. We just offended our final listener. <laughs> <laughs> he was a Henry, <laughs> Henry lover. <laughs> but uh, okay, and John T writes in. He says, "I'm writing about your last few episodes where you're talking about favorite carry guns for the mean." streets and the backwoods mm. notice how he didn't say it's a bush gun bush he said backwoods Boy. well he's obviously not from australia so. yes <laughs> and he says my edc guns are k or car cw9 solid gun yeah that yeah. was the gun that started the single stack like kind of that's what got it popular. I wouldn't say it's what started it because yeah, because you got some old, old stuff. That. Yeah, but, yeah. That, but the size, like, yeah. did did they have full size nine mils or not full size? Did the they have micro single compact. stack micro compact nine mils before? Yeah, like the Walther PPK is pretty small, but, it but wasn't that's a three eighty. That's a three eighty. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So you had three eighties and 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 Makarovs. Yeah, but macro don't count. It doesn't count if your trigger pull is over 20 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to make that first one count. Yeah. <laughs> and then if it doesn't, the next ones are, aren't yeah, too bad. Yeah, you're, but you're <laughs> closing your eyes, squinting as you're squeezing. <laughs> like, you're struggling. <laughs> you know, one of the worst ones was the Polish, uh, oh, the Polish P64. Okay, there's a different one, another Polish one that was really bad, too. Oh, they, they had some really they, bad Yeah, ones. Polish, man. They got the... And I can, yeah, get, I can, can tell some, Polish uh, jokes because my, my first wife was Polish. My, my daughter's half Polish, but she inherited the good part. But anyway, um, <laughs> the, the, 
Yeah, so there were those guns that, that were that size. But the, the car, I think, was the first big manufacturer that was a small, yeah. single-stack, pocket yeah. size 9 millimeter Luger. They were Luger. heavy, because I had the K, the car K9. It was all steel. Oh, yeah. Steel. Yeah. yeah, those that are heavy. A, that the, was a but heavy the CW. Gun. The CWs were the, that was the, the Palmer. Palmer. Yeah. And those are light. They are. They're very light, very oh, compact. Oh, and the springs, man. They did, instead of using the... the the two-part spring mm-hmm. they use that one recoil spring holy crap you had to be careful not to like poke your eye out when you're disassembling it <laughs> and like launching i got one like hit, it made a little dent in my ceiling you ever had a recoil spring stick in the ceiling almost it was yeah. with that car k9 okay like i i seriously considered afterwards like why i was not wearing safety glasses when disassembling that gun because it could have <laughs> taking my eye out oh he's like for real there's there's a lot of springs that can do that yeah but i think that's probably one of the worst recoil springs for that kind of thing those ones because the recoil springs were so hard and tight and stuff you'd have to break those guns in before even you know consider carrying it right like oh yeah they would well you need to to do that anyway yeah but to be reliable i mean you take a glock it's it's fine it'll shoot right out of the box yeah but those ones you know you had to shoot a good decent power 50 rounds through it but anyways back to his his <laughs> comment he said cw9 or glock 26 for in the waistband carry with original mag holders for the spare mags nice mm. nice a glock 19 usually rides off body in a dedicated backpack compartment held in a concealment solutions off body holster and mm. spare mag pouch while hunting, hiking, my new favorite gun is a Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum in 44 mag. Nice. Solid choice. Very solid yeah. choice. This 3-inch barreled mid-frame 5-shot is a great compromise of power and portability. It is super accurate and a real pussycat to shoot in 44 Special for fun. Before that, I usually carried a Browning Buckmark and 22 long rifle in the woods. I truly hope that Mark and Carl recover from their pr- respective health problems. I'll keep them in my prayers. Keep up the good work with the show. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Thanks, John T. Yeah. Good to hear that. All Excellent right. choice on the... So I'm guessing the Smith & Wesson 44 that he's talking about, I think that's the 69. Because he says it's a midsize. So I'm thinking that's the uh, the L-frame five shot. Hmm. Really yeah, nice gun. Yeah, Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum. So yeah. I don't know which one. Those, are, one. those are sweet. I, I passed on one a while back, and I've kind of regretted it, kind of. Yeah. But I've got the pre-29, so I'm, I'm yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> so before we jump into what we did with guns and <clears throat> to, uh, instead of a, a news article, yeah. Jason, you want to give us an update on how so, Carl's doing? Update on Carl. If you follow him on Facebook, or what his wife is posting on Facebook, it's, I don't know exactly what the page is, Carl... The dwarf, Dope, dope dope boy. boy, something. Search for it; it'll pop up. You know, he goes, he goes up and down as is, I think, normal in these circumstances. They've been hoping all week to get a tracheotomy in him for the ventilator because that will relieve a lot of the issues that he's having and make things better. Um, they have not been able to do it yet because of other issues. As of today. Um, he was put on dialysis because his kidneys are having, having issues. issues, and they they punched a, a hose into his chest cavity to relieve some pressure from lung issues, from blood clots, and and stuff like that. So he's in he's in rough shape. Yeah, so he could really use some some prayers. Absolutely, and, and you know what? I mean, tomorrow it may be a different story. It's kind of the way he's been been going. It's just kind of you know. Two steps forward and three steps back sometimes, but it's it's rough. It's rough, and we hate to see it. But um, yeah, you just keep them in your prayers. And um, I haven't talked to Mark recently about his health situation. But uh, yeah, he wanted to come on tonight. Yeah, but uh, he was just kind of worried about his his voice. Yeah, people, he worries about how he's going to sound. <laughs> Yeah, his we, voice isn't we tell so strong cares. these days. <laughs> it's it is difficult for him to speak. Yeah, and I get it. So we want him here, but we try not to put too much pressure on on him to come. Yeah, I think what I need to do is get that bag in my freezer with, yeah. that has three sparrows in it. Yeah, I think once I have ten, Mark, you're going to be obligated to show up to yeah. pick up that frozen bag of. I could have added sparrows. a couple to that. Today. So is that for his his hawks? Then? Yeah, yeah, yeah hawk food. Mm-hmm. 
Does does he need like beavers? <laughs> beaver? Do you have beavers? Well, I, I got seven beavers while I was on the elk hunt. What? Yeah, there was like five hundred pounds of meat. Wow. So. You can tell huh. us more when we get into what we did with Gov. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. We'll get there. <laughs> all right. So. so, anyway, that's what's going on. We're all very concerned about him, and that's really all we can do, which, yeah, which makes it even harder. It's tough because w- there's nothing you can do to help. Like, yeah. Uh, well, and the thing to remember in these in these situations is, um, you know, reach out and, you know, let these folks know that if you love them, let them know. Yeah. yeah, you know, if you hate them, don't don't let them know that. But <laughs> but if you love them, you know, just let them know, and that um, and that's that's really the best thing we can do in these situations is you know pray for them, let them know how we feel. Yeah, and, and contrary to at least one comment on the Facebook page from Charlie Foxtrot, <laughs> we are we are not replacing Carl with Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> I, did, I did enjoy reading that. Oh, that's so funny. So, but yeah, no, you can't replace Carl. No. <laughs> yeah. He, he is definitely a one of a kind. Anyway, let's move on. Let's get into what we did with guns. Jason. I will start. So. <laughs> since two days ago. Yeah, what since you we doing? recorded two days ago <laughs> already. I actually, so today, I was leaving for work, and I was leaving a little bit late, getting Henry in the car, and I look over my shoulder, and there are sparrows all over on my roof, in my bushes, and they were taunting and mocking me because they knew I was leaving. And it's been probably two or three weeks since I've even taken a shot. Adam and I really was like I should just go in and get my gun I could take out a handful of them right now nope I gotta get to work so I let to work did my thing when I came home everyone was gone so I went stake out <laughs> <laughs> I grabbed my uh, Benjamin Marauder pistol and I set up in my little blind in my garden shed that faces the chicken coop <laughs> and these little suckers are like they know me and they see me coming and they're gone and I, and I don't get a shot and sometimes they're in the ivy and I've got the scope looking where the ivy's moving and I twice today I'm like panning around with the scope and I would see one's little head sticking out of the ivy and I would go back and I would stop as soon as that gun that barrel stopped they were gone. <laughs> yeah. Because I've popped them out of the ivy before. Little head looking at me, all of a sudden, pink, and it falls out. <laughs> wow. But yeah. I, I was honing my hostage sniper skills today. <laughs> because I would see they would they drop out of the bottom of the ivy behind the coop where I can't see them, and then they come around and they get on the feeder. Well, I didn't have as good a shot before because my pepper bushes were in the way in the garden those are all gone now so i have a much clearer shot so i would see him drop down i'm like okay i know they're on the feeder and there's a chicken standing Uh. right in the way and i would just hold on that chicken take the safety off and i'm like move 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 and with kind of half move it got out of the way pop headshot dropped (laughs) if my wife knew i was missing her chickens by like millimeters she would freak out anyway i i popped two of them that way waiting for a chicken to just move just barely out of the way bam they're dead (laughs) those what's what's crazy though is that those some of those air guns are so accurate yeah like with mine I, i i wouldn't hesitate yeah. To, to take one of those hostage style yeah. shots because I know I can shoot him in the eyeball. <clears throat> oh yeah. yeah. Well, this, this one is, is this one is accurate at close range. It's it's much lower powered than like your Crown and, mm-hmm. and my FN that I have or FX. Um, but you know, I'm taking a 15 yard shot maybe, and that thing is just pinpoint. It's awesome and it's so nice. much fun. I actually shot at one of my pheasants the other day. So I've got this handful of pheasants. And those things, if you're ever interested in raising pheasants, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so these are they, pheasants that you're raising. We're raising them to, to train the dogs on, okay. in theory. We started with 15. Now we're down to 8. Because you keep shooting them? No, because they get out. They, <laughs> uh, find, they find the weak points. <laughs> you can go through and say, okay, we're secure. There are no weak points. And they find one. Yeah. They're like, oh, here's an opening that's... An inch larger than the others, I can get through this, and they do. Huh. And uh, so I had a pheasant loose, and I and I pulled out my little beaming, 
lined up the, the sights, take the shot, and I hit missed it by like half an inch. <laughs> oh. I'm thinking the sights are off. I've only been using it for shooting mice at, you know. Five yards. Five I, yards. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need an FX. I do. I, I do. I think you do too, man. Because you would not have missed that shot. Either. No, I wouldn't. And and I and I have some guns that I need to sell now. So I I'll probably. What are you, what are you selling? Uh, so I I, <laughs> I I did something I didn't think I was going to do just yet. I traded off the double rifle. What? what? Yes, oh. I know. So before the hunt, I was trying out did all you get these a different new truck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still driving the old one, but. Uh, I had a guy come by that had, had seen the gun, uh-huh. and he's like, I never actually saw that gun properly. Can I look at that? Sure. And he's looking it over, fondling it. Doing, of course. In front of you? Yes, I know. <laughs> so, scandalous. <laughs> and he, he's like, what's the price? And I said, well, I don't know if I'm ready to sell that yet. And he's like, e- come on, Gene. Everything's Jean. for sale. Everything's <laughs> for sale. What's your price? And I said, it's this much. And he's like, oh, really? That much? And I said, yeah, that's actually a fair price. It's not the price I would probably get at auction, but this is a fair price for it. And he's like, well, would you trade? Depends on the trade. So I got a heck of a trade, and I got some really nice guns that I'd kind of like to keep, but they're all, three of them are new in the box, and I, I don't keep new in the box guns. Yeah. Hmm. I'll buy a used gun. What do you got new in the box? Uh, so a Browning BPS, 28 gauge, okay, Ducks okay. Unlimited gun, a Remington 870 Wingmaster, 1989 gun, 28 gauge, new in the box. A Colt single action army, black powder frame, forty five Colt, four and three quarter inch barrel, new in the box, and it's it's Whoa. gorgeous. That that, it is, kind of, that that peaks both of our interests. Yeah, the, the shotgun, twenty eight gauge shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I've been looking for a twenty eight gauge Wingmaster. Yeah, but not one new in the box. <laughs> What's wrong with new in the box? Doesn't have soul. It doesn't, it doesn't have the soul that I want. It, okay, I'll it's, buy that. It's it, like the Elder Wand <laughs> versus one you get from Ollivander. I don't no one from Ollivander is a, a nice one. It's got a soul. But the Elder Wand has a lot more soul. Okay. I what figured else? you guys were nerds and knew these things. Yeah. Uh, that what, what was that, that just flew right over my head. My All dude. right. It, was it a Harry Potter reference? It was. That's what uh, it was. <laughs> okay. You guys are like Star Trek nerds or something? No. 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 <laughs> um, All righty. Well, anyway. And what else did you get? And then, uh, so I got those three, and then a uh, Winchester 1886 in 33 Winchester. Hmm. Nice 30, gun. 33 Winchester. Yeah, so it's a 4570 with a, a lot of taper, neck down uh, to... Uh, uh, 338-ish. So it's kind of like a 4065. Kind of, but, but more more takedown. More. Yeah. So it's ballistically, it's identical to a um, 35 Remington. Okay. So you know what you should do with that one? I'm thinking about reboring that to either 4570 or taking a spare barrel that I have and boring it out to 5110. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> and then that you would need replace to turn the it, double. Well, you need to turn it into a 5110. And let you shoot it. And then let me, air quotes, borrow it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would love to have a 5110. I, I want one real bad. And, and I'm thinking hard on that one because I've, I've got a 4082 barrel out in the shop. Mm-hmm. And the 4082 is an interesting round, but it's, eh, you know, it's another oddball. Oh, you know what it would, another option would be is uh, you could do a 50 Alaskan. I thought about that as well, but I don't, I'd have to start over with brass, and I don't have any 348 brass. I'm not brass. thinking about this for you. Oh. I'm thinking about this for me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? Well, Come on, dude. This is like. <laughs> well, I mean. Uh... <laughs> so, I, yeah, I have 50 Alaskan dies. Oh, nice. So you don't brass. have the gun. I have a, a, an Encore. Oh, Oh yeah, you, you need a repeater. No, this I do. I do. Yeah. Need, that's why I was asking about yeah. that. Yeah, but I do have a, a fast twist fifty cal barrel, a 50, or a fifty Alaskan, oh, okay. and I load the fifty BMG bullets. Oh, so it's like a big fat subsonic plinker. I guess you could call well, it. Well, with the lever gun, you wouldn't be able to use the BMG bullets. Oh no, no, no! I'm telling you what I have right now. Oh, okay. but since the brass would be the same. Yeah, like, I could use. That same 50 Alaskan. 50 Alaskan's a heck of a good round. And I have a nice, nice hollow point mold 
for the 50 Alaskan. Nice. Now, is that a, is that a what is that, a 512? It's 510. Or? Yeah, 510. Okay. Nice. So. Hmm. The, the ideas. Oh, man. It's a, <laughs> when, when I heard you say 1886, then my eyes just. Well, the only problem, though, so this is a put-together gun. The action is from 1891. Oh, it's an old one. So it's an old oh, one. Oh, it's so not you're, the modern. So you're limited a little bit by pressure. Yeah. And that's why I was thinking 5110 because I, I I like black powder, and uh, which is hmm. going to be harder to get in the very near future uh, due to GoX having issues. Yeah. But um, there's a lot of stores. Gunnies, I don't think they carry. They don't carry black, black powder. powder anymore. Most stores don't carry black powder. Um, because it's a it's a hassle. You have to carry. Yeah. You have to. You have to be licensed for it, and, and you have to have it outside keep... in a in a magazine. You yeah. know, basically a separate steel box out there, and um, it's just kind of a pain. Yeah. So, what else did you oh, do with guns yeah. this week? Pete? Oh yeah, so uh, <laughs> so I let go of the the double. Um, I was I'm up still in the shocked. I am too. Like I'm I'm thinking, why on earth did I let that go? You have to do something so that. <sighs> But then I remembered, wait a minute, I go. I gave the guy the price, and if it's a gun I like, it's, you know, it's never a cheap price. Right, yeah. You know, if it's business, so you got your different. money's worth out of it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I did good. I did very well with it. That 1886, though, man, you got to, I think you got to do something fancy with it and well, and so you, to replace it's, that um, double barrel or double rifle. Yeah. Well, it was a double barrel, just a rifle. Um, and and I, am, I am thinking I'll, I'll probably... I'm leaning towards the 50 110 option because uh, why not? Oh, you know, yeah. ballistically, it'll be about the same as the double. I can use all those bullet molds that I've bought for it. Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. still got a lot of black powder, and uh, yeah, yeah, I load it up like a it. like a 50 90 most of the time. And yeah, do some express rounds occasionally and whatnot. But um, I was on the on the elk hunt up in the Uinas for. Right. Ages felt like months, but it was like three weeks total, <laughs> which was very nice. It was really good to get away. Yeah, never saw an elk. Your wife did. My wife. Well, during during her hunt, we did. We saw okay. we saw a number of elk. Um, the fourth evening, we were sitting on this meadow. had um, had a nice herd come out. Nice big six by six bull. Wow. He had about a dozen fifteen cows with him, and. Uh, you know, it's it's so funny, you know, when... I don't know if you've ever hunted with your wife. I know no. you've hunted a little bit. I've yeah. hunted a little bit, but not, no. So when you not when you take your wife, wife hunting, it's always interesting. <clears throat> so my wife shoots a lot. You know, she shoots with Connie and the, you know, that group. The girl with the gun group. Yeah, the girl with the gun group. And, they're, and so she's very proficient with a gun. Mm-hmm. She's very comfortable with a gun. But when she's actually shooting something, she's a different critter altogether. And and so I was like, emotions get involved. Yeah, it's like you're saying. It's like there's like I'm seeing all these elk, and it's like I could shoot any one of those from where I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, are you going to shoot sometime today? Come on, (laughs) we're losing daylight. (laughs) And and she's like, I don't have a shot. I don't have a shot. I've given up on her shooting. So I'm sitting there, and I've got my phone out, and I'm taking pictures of this bull. And all of a sudden, I hear this boom. (laughs) <laughs> I drop my phone, the bull, it scares the tar out of him, and, and, and I look at her, did you get it? And she's like, I don't know, did you see where the one I shot? No. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was actually a lot of fun. But, uh, and this she, was a muzzleloader? This was a muzzleloader, okay. which is, this is her first time hunting with a muzzleloader. Okay. She was not happy that I put her in for a muzzleloader, and she actually got drawn. <laughs> she was kind of ticked about that, but... Um, I, I put her on one of the Thompson centers. Yeah. Put a scope on it. She was she was good. Yeah. Um, made an excellent shot. Um, you know the thing about elk is a lung shot elk will die, but you can't push it. Yeah. If you push it, you might never find that sucker. Right. So it laid down. We walked over towards it to to put it down. Well, it jumped up and took off running. And I said, "Shoot it! Shoot it!" And and uh, well, she shot. Didn't hit it, but, you know, a lot of people hitting a, a moving critter is not an easy thing. Right, yeah. So, but we couldn't find any blood from where it laid down to where it, when it got up and ran to the trees. Hmm. Didn't find a blood trail for 50 yards. That's unusual. From where she, where it was standing when she shot it to where it laid down, buckets of blood. But from when it took off towards the trees, no blood at all. The next morning we went in and it took us, it took us an hour to find it. And it was 50 yards from where she shot it. It came back? No. Or... 
No. It, it so just, it, it so she shot it over here, and it came over here, and then from there it was I got about you. the same distance. It was I about 50 you. yards into the, the okay. trees. Just hard to find. Just hard to find, you know, because you don't have any reference. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, when, when it's evening and you're, um, you know, adrenaline is going and everything, trying to figure out exactly where it went into the trees and, you know, carefully looking for, for any kind of sign because we're expecting we're going to be tracking. Yeah. You know, it's going to be a long day. Mm-hmm. And, um, but it took us a solid hour to figure out where it was. And it, and it came down to intuition. You know, mm-hmm. a wounded animal isn't going to go high. It's going to go low. Yeah. It's, um, and they usually go towards water. Mm-hmm. And so went in the direction of the creek, lower elevation, and boom, there it is. Nice. But uh, we found one drop of blood in that 50 yards, and it was right before the, where it fell. Huh. So 50 yards... You know, a double lung hit, you know, big, huge hole in the side of it, and they could still go that distance without leaving any kind of sign. So it was, wow. it was, it was a, this hunt was really good for, for um, academic interest, if you will, you know, of learning how things work and what they can get by with. You know, I, during my bull hunt, didn't see any elk, but during the day I was setting beaver traps and, uh, <laughs> So I got right. I got seven beaver. Huh. One evening I was uh, overlooking this the, this set of beaver ponds. There's probably 20 ponds in this one section. And um, I sat up there one evening. I had my elk rifle on one side and I had my 22 Hornet on the other. And I figured whichever shows up first, that's what's getting shot. <laughs> well, it was the beavers. Yeah. I had a beaver come out and it's 50 yards. Mm-hmm. And this little Hornet is a very accurate little rifle. And um, lined up on this beaver. I shot, goes underwater, makes a big splash. I'm like, all right, I got that one. Another one came out, shot that one, big splash. <laughs> I figured once I have three, I'll go ahead and go down and collect them all. Well, after I shot the second one, I'm walking down uh, a little closer, and this one, another one pops up, and I quick, I shoot it, and I get over there, and there's, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. And I thought, my gosh, how on earth could I have missed? I couldn't have missed. And the one I think I did miss, but the second one, it turned out it wasn't three, it was two. Mm. So the first one I think was a clean miss. The uh, the second one, I trapped it two days later. And the reason I knew it was it, because it had <laughs> a twenty two trough cut in the top of its skull. <laughs> oh, jeez. Showing brain matter. And wow. the second shot chipped its teeth. <laughs> so when it was running through the water, you know, they're like it's like shooting a speedboat. When they're when they're moving, they're moving. Yeah. Well, I swung through it and shot and let it just a little bit too much. You know, if it'd That's been where it shot the teeth or whatever, got the teeth. You know, huh. if it'd been, it was interesting because you know here's this critter with a quarter inch out of the top of its brain. Uh huh. You know, quite a bit of trauma. Yeah. You know, with that kind of shot, but was well enough to survive. Two more days until it got in the trap. Huh. So it was it was very interesting that, you know, sometimes a headshot isn't as effective as, as we would think. Yeah. You yeah. know, if it'd been a half inch lower, oh yeah. It it had been, you know, his his eggs had been scrambled. Yeah. But uh, you know, so it was it was very interesting ballistically to to see some of these things. But uh, a three thirty Connor bear uh, seemed to be a little bit more effective. <laughs> so So you got seven beavers. Seven beavers. Do you, do you um, tan the hides and everything? Yep. So I've got the hides nice. um, drying them, drying them, then I'll flesh them and work on tanning them. And um, first time trapping, first time really messing with fur that much. Yeah. I've, you know, I've done like squirrel tails and things like that when sure. I was in the south. But um, this is this is a different different thing for me here. It's I've actually heard that beaver meat is pretty tasty. So I did save two hindquarters. Because there, there's some meaty buggers. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of meat on these things, and two of the beavers were 60, 70 pounds. Wow, big ones. So one of the ones that I shot, uh-huh. um, well, the one that I shot uh, was a big beaver. Like it, it took my wife and I both to drag it out. Oh, jeez. I mean, it. I was oh. trying to drag it out by myself, and that all I was doing was getting deeper in the mud. <laughs> it was that was a big beaver. Wow. But um, yeah, good looking meat. looks It looks a lot like pork. Yeah, or I've a heard dark, like you, dark pork. if you cook it, like you can cook it like a pot roast, and it tastes like a 
really good pot roast. Interesting. Well, I've got two in the freezer. We'll see what ha- what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I got to try it before I go back up because if they're if they're really tasty, I don't. Maybe I'll just fill the. If you get an extra one, save it for me. I would would love to cook it. I'll I'll eat some. I'll try. I want to cook it for my family and not tell them (laughs) what it is, and then just see what what their reaction is of the pot roast. Yeah. And then if they're like totally like, oh, this is weird, you know, like why does this pot roast have webbed toes? (laughs) (laughs) That's the other thing. Their feet are gnarly. Yeah. Like they got claws on their front, like normal rodent type paws. But their back feet, holy crap. Like, we're talking like a foot with webbing. <laughs> yeah. It is the weirdest thing. Yeah. So, it's serious. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll take right. one if you, if you can get one. I, I will, will do too. that. All right. I'm all for it. All right. So, and we got once, two orders once for they're beer. Done eating, I won't do it while they're eating because then those get weirded out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. After they're done eating, then I'll tell them, hey, that was, that was a beaver. A beaver roast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, in their back legs... Like, I, I put them in, in quart bags. Uh-huh. Like, we're talking, that hind leg is, like, that big. It is, it... Almost like a ham. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> nice. Like, My gosh, that's that's a lot of meat there. All so, right. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to talk about what you did with guns? <laughs> yeah, what'd you do with guns? I will be very brief, because I'm super excited about the topic. I am, we have, too. We're, like, pretty low on time. <laughs> so, I did a little bit more reloading. Surprise, surprise. And I picked up a couple of... Now, this is, like, not typical for me. I got some cheap Chinese crap, right? Oh, boy. okay. So I got a Chinese scope. It's like a vector optics, uh, low power variable <laughs> scope. Gene's and face is great. He's trying yeah. not to throw up. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know. Optics is one of those things where it's like, ah, it's you gotta hard spend some money and, on yeah. optics. <laughs> but I did get it for like, I got it for free. So <laughs> all right, I figured well. I, normally I would not buy a, a Chinese optic that isn't labeled vortex i was gonna say there's a lot of chinese optics because, yeah. out there that are worth having but, but mm, yeah i mean <laughs> we, we, we could talk optics all day yeah yeah optics generally speaking the more you pay the more you get yes to a point as long as it has an l in the name you'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah Anyways, so I got one of those, and I'm thinking about pulling off my, uh, what was that, uh, the Athlon scope I have? Oh, yeah. Hey, it's a, because the Athlon scope I put on that 25 cal air rifle. Yeah. It's, I think it's a little too nice for that gun. (laughs) Okay. So this one is a one to six, and it actually looks really clear, so I figure put the cheap scope on the loner gun. You know, I bought it as a loader, a loner gun yeah. for the squirrel hunt to give yeah. to a, a boy, let him use or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I think that would be, a, as long as it holds zero on an air gun, which it should. Yeah. On those, then, it should. Yeah. Then, if it doesn't, then, you know. Oh, yeah, then it goes in the garbage. <laughs> but, yeah, so I got that. And then I got this green laser from... Uh, <laughs> Gene's making that face again. Yeah. It's, <laughs> anyways, it's, it's kind of like a clone of, of one of the Streamlight TLR. Oh. The old style. Like, yeah, yeah. I have one, like, like a, TL- a TLR2. Yes. Right I have there. one of those that has a, it's a flashlight laser combo, right. but red laser. This one is like, it looks almost the same, but with a green laser. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So I don't plan on using that as a self defense rely, put my life on the line for that flashlight optic but that could make a fun little toy okay so and how much was that i got that free also wow you're just fleecing yeah. the chinese i don't they, <laughs> they send me stuff and i'm supposed to do a review but uh. yeah we'll see how it goes <laughs> but yeah it's a feyachi brand that sounds italian eh, it's not <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 plenty chinese right so it's made out of chineseium so. <laughs> okay, before we do our tacos top five and then jump into a topic, which is going to be somewhat related, let's hit mag holder, horizontal mag carriers, super awesome. It's what I use, used them forever. Most comfortable way to carry a spare magazine. Doesn't sit there and poke you in the side all day. Use the code get in the van. I have candy at magholder.com and you'll save a chunk. 
and and they're working on new stuff all the time. So keep an eye on their website. Sign up for their newsletter so you know what's happening. Concealmentsolutions.com. Um, I'm actually working on a new appendix carry holster hmm. that looks promising. Which if I if I get this where I want it to be, and it looks like I will, that I already have five different appendix carry holsters on there right now. I think at least two of them are going to go away. All right. So. Well, and as you improve things and change things, yeah. make things better. Exactly. You know, that's and, I'm, the, and I'm always looking to how I can improve something. Yeah. And I, I listen very closely to customers, and that's where this feedback came from. And I, he's, he's, he's one of those customers that I've known for a long time, so you don't really listen to him. You pretend like you're listening <laughs> oh, to <yeah>. him. <laughs> and finally, I'm like, all right, fine. What do you want? <laughs> Here, if I make you this, will you leave me alone? <laughs> this is the best thing I've ever had. Okay, I'll see if I can polish it off. <laughs> nice. Anyway, uh, use the code Show Me the Candy. You'll save fifteen percent, and I'll throw some swag in for you too. Awesome. All right, tacos top five. And now it's time for tacos top five. All right. Okay, so today. This is one I I was super excited about. Like, I've been I, excited about it too. We were wanting to do this like a few episodes ago, right. but we were waiting for Gene to come yeah. because I wanted to hear what Gene had to say. I about am this. not an expert on this topic by any stretch of the imagination, though I have great interest in it. So I am looking to learn hmm. as much as any. All right. So All for right. today's. Tacos Top 5, it is our top five favorite military surplus guns. Okay. So, let's go round robin this time. All right. We'll, All right. we'll have Jason go first. Okay. So, I actually have six on here, but... You cheated. I know. I had six I, also. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot one that I think is really cool. So, it would be really easy to just, like you guys were saying, just go with the vanilla stuff, the 1911s, the, the M1 Garand, stuff like that, which are all things that I would like to have. Vanilla is still the number one flavor. It's true. Yeah. It's true. So, I went a little bit more obscure... But these are things that I would genuinely like to have someday. Okay, so these are things you do not own. These are things but I you don't have. Do you want the to only, own? The only mil maybe. surps I have are an SKS, a Yugo SKS. It's a nice yeah, one. Nice. That's kind of cool. And that yeah. uh, Swedish Mauser, which oh. is pretty cool also. <laughs> Uh, I like the Swedish Mausers. But, those, <laughs> but, but I got those because they, they were too good of deals to pass up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not that I was p- specifically looking for them. Here's what first one. This might be a little bit more obscure. I don't know. An FN nineteen oh three. Why? Pistol. The pistol. Okay. Hmm. Because that's what was used to start World War Two. <laughs> that's that one. was the gun used to World to, War One. Oh, you're right. World War One. Yeah. yeah. That that was the gun used by the Serbian kid who assassinated Franz Ferdinand, which catapulted the catalyst for World War One. And they're cut, and it's a Browning design. Was that? No, that was the 1900. It was the FN 1900, I believe, wasn't it? I don't think so. I could be wrong, but I don't I think, think was, I am. I think it was the 19 the 1900 model. You look it up and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it was the 1903. But yeah, because there was the Colt 1903. There's the Colt Pocket Hammerless, which is very similar to the 1903. Look at him trying to correct me. Ooh. Man, he's, he's like reading the Encyclopedia research. of World Guns or something. No, <laughs> actually, I just, I, just finished, I just finished a history of John Browning's guns. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I didn't just do this just for this topic alone. I, okay. This is stuff that I had been reading about, and I went, that would be cool. And then you came up with this thing. And went, okay. That's one I'm going to put on there. Oh, that's cool. Okay, Gene, what's yours? Uh, so, <clears throat> I'm going to go with the Russian 1895 Winchester. Russian 1895. Wait, Russian and Winchester. Yeah. How does that work? So, Russia okay. did a contract with Winchester to build a whole bunch of their 1895 lever actions and 762 by 54 rimmed. Huh. Incredibly rare here in the States. Yeah. Um, like, I've never seen one in person. Uh-huh. 
but I would love to have one. Just I, I would take one too if you ever find cool. two. I'll I'll keep an eye yeah. on. Yeah, if I find <laughs> take one, I'll have you I'll know. take the other. <laughs> but very cool. Yeah, kind of neat, kind of obscure. So but. it's a made in the USA Winchester oh, yeah. that was commissioned by the Soviet, or not Soviet Union, because that didn't exist. Yeah, it was yet. just Russia. It was just Russia. Yeah, and all shipped over there. Yeah, wow. and they 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 got a lot. Oh, I bet. Like, the bulk of the 1895s were that gun. Huh. Which is, is there anything different about the Russian ones? They're they're a musket length, oh, so okay. a full length wood and all that. So they're big. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Like, I, I probably wouldn't hunt with it or anything, but right. it'd be kind of cool to have for a while until I got somebody. talked out of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, Taco. Okay. For me, I picked the Finnish M39. Oh, yeah. That's so a good gun. it's kind of like... The Mosin Nagant, but made better. Okay. So yeah? It actually is like a Mosin Nagant made better. Everything about it was made better. Yeah. But it's, uh, I have one of those, and I got, I actually originally bought a pair of them from, I think it was Classic Firearms when they had a bunch in stock. And the one I got was, was really nice, really good condition. The bore's bright and shiny, and it shoots lights out. Yeah. It it's very good shooter and they're known to be good shooters like yeah. you know Mosin Nagant rifles from the Russians are kind of hit or miss. Yeah. These ones they're consistently good. Nice. So I I love mine. Everything about it it's like everything's a little thicker, nicer, fit and finish everything. So. Okay. All right. I might be getting a little more vanilla now. But that's okay. Vanilla's all right. The uh, Luger pistol, the PO8. Okay, I was hoping somebody would pick a Luger. Not because it's a great gun, but they're unique. They're unique. They're attractive. They're attractive. They're iconic. The action of it is goofy. Is goofy. Do you want to talk about that action? (laughs) Invented by Browning? Actually, yes. Was it? Well, depends on who you listen to. They were in a court battle, Browning and Luger, over that, that. Interesting. Pivoting, I don't remember what they call it. The way it, that if elbow it, yeah, comes the up. Toggle. Yeah. The toggle. The toggle, that's what it was called. You know, because it he is. had a shotgun that was designed the same way. Oh, yeah. And a salesman for FN, we know Browning was, was big with FN, who also was working with Luger at the time, claimed, well, when we were on the ship crossing the Atlantic, Browning... He shared with me all the ideas that he, or, or I talked to him about this Luger, and he told me he was asking my opinion on these things and that, and how he should design this shotgun and da 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 da. So we talked about things, and he stole the idea because I accidentally let it leak out. Browning's response to that was, he's a salesman. I wouldn't trust anything he had to say about mechanics <laughs> or anything else. <laughs> so nice. the court yeah. battle went on for years and years, and eventually Browning just designed a better system anyway. So anyway. Yeah. 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 That's cool. All right, uh, Gene? To go back, it was the FN Model 1910 that started World War II. That oh. was the gun that was used to assassinate... Franz Ferdinand? Uh, yes. Okay, that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> so. I was confused. Very adorable little gun. Yes. So, Actually, yeah. you know, because I did look it up before I came, and yeah. the, they looked at the picture, I'm like, that looks bigger than the one I was thinking of. Yeah, the 1903 is kind bigger. of a long slide. Yeah, yeah. 32 so or 380. So I changed but... mine to the 1910. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> all right. My second one is going to be the M1 carbine. Because oh, okay. I just was I mine, love right. those. I have a soft spot in my heart for that little carbine. I think those it's because they are look cool. like Ruger 10 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's, I know. <laughs> of course, Jason would think that. Uh, you have to flip that around. The 1022 <laughs> looks like an M1 carbine. Yeah. Whatever. He knows you know. That. You know the cool thing about the M1 carbine. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It was developed, it was designed by a guy in prison in North Carolina for running liquor. Huh. And he was in there thinking, how can I better protect my liquor next time when I get out? When I get out. So, <laughs> so he designed he, a gun. He designed the M1 carbine while in prison. And then... Um, what, did he design it as a full auto or a semi-auto? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I know if you go to the the Buffalo Bill center of the west up in Cody, Wyoming. Yeah. They have a ton 
of prototypes from Winchester because Winchester hired this guy and said, hey, we, we want you to come work with us. And could you bring some of that moonshine? Probably, <laughs> probably, because um, there ain't nothing like North Carolina moonshine. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, they, they've got all these various uh, variants of the prototypes that they did uh, for the M1 carbine. It, it was really eye-opening what they did and, and really huh. cool. But So here's the next question because i that's on that was the next one on my list too was the oh, nice. one carving i uh-huh. i just i love the looks of them they're they're, they're just so fun to shoot too they're awesome i yeah. uh, i've, full, I've full had a bunch of them or the paratrooper version full stock folding i would, full stock. I would say either but i kind of i kind of lean toward the folding one just because it's i've different it's more unique well, and I've had both. Yeah, um, I'm sure for practicality, for yeah, wood stock is going to feel shoots, nicer. And it it feels nicer. It shoots better. It's yeah. not a hassle. Yeah, and some of the folding stocks are a pain. Yeah, yeah. So the, it's such a great gun for like low recoil. Oh, you know, great! Like kids can shoot it, and it's it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're fun. They're reasonably accurate. Yeah, you know, some people they think, oh, it should be more accurate, but it was it was designed to it's hit a man-sized target yeah. at a hundred, hundred and fifty yards. Right. You know, yeah. and it was for people that would normally be issued a handgun, yes. but they couldn't shoot worth it, aren't? So you yeah. give them a carbine. Yeah. And well, and the thing you got to consider also is this is this is coming out of the time with all the great big bolt action guns that were super big, super oh, yeah. heavy. And then you hand them this little carbine that weighs oh, nothing. Wonderful, can be full auto. Yeah, I mean that thing was a game changer. Oh yeah, I like mine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for mine, probably no surprise, but I picked the old Crag. I crag figured you rifle. would. Yeah. I the thirty forty Crag. I man, it's a cartridge wise, it's okay. You know, it's it's kind of lends itself to be a good cast bullet cartridge. And, and, and ballistically, it's about like a thirty thirty. Yeah, maybe a bit better, maybe. Mm, yeah, it depends. But, uh, yeah, that that all depends. You take like a modern thirty thirty action, you know, higher pressure, all that. Then, but yeah. but yeah, it's like a but that side feeding. Oh, it's so fast. Loading yeah. gate thing, and and they haven't and made a slicker action. Oh, it's buttery smooth. Hmm. And this is like an old gun. It's like yeah, yeah. hundred years old or whatever, oh, yeah. and you know just. I, I, mine is not an original like uh, or original military configuration. It's been sporterized. The the one you I got, got from me. Got it from you, yeah. yeah. But yeah. well, it's got the original stock. It's it, just had things added to it. Yeah, or taken yeah. away. Taken away and then added. Yeah. Also, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it has those little inlays and yeah. stuff. Kind of a neat gun, but, but yeah, it's at some point I will own a full un unmolested unmolested. <laughs> Now, what are your thoughts on the 6.5 Krag, the Norwegian? Well, I like the 30 cal Krag okay. because I have bullet molds. Oh, okay. And so the 30 cals, you know, you can stick a heavy 30 cal bullet in there and it shoots just fine. Yeah. And the skinnier you go with cast bullets, the mm. trickier it is. Yep. Krag rifle, not a surprise. Love the cartridge, love the buttery smooth action. And awesome. It's, and it's just goofy. Oh, yeah. in a good way. Oh, in, a, yeah. in a good way. A good uh, way. I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> it is so down. weird. You open up that side loading gate, just put the rounds in loose, like yeah. shove them in, and then you in. close it, and it speeds it from the opposite side. Yeah. I, I think Pretty impressive great. engineering. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Well, my next one was the M1 carbine, so I'll skip that one. All right. All right. This one's a little bit more specific. I would like a Walther PPK chambered in thirty two. But I want one that was issued to one of the SS officers. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, uh, what I find is interesting is he keeps picking these handguns, and when I think military surplus, I, know. I never pick handguns because, because most of them have horrible triggers. And I and I know that, but I'm just when I look at like the rifles and stuff, so many of them are just they just blend you, into the same. To you, same they're the thing. same. Yeah. Yeah. No. I guess yeah. there's yeah you got to appreciate the the differences in the different actions but if sure yeah and, and that's actually why I, I picked my next one okay is the action like i've, I've had the original did you choose the mauser action or something that's number four <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> i mean i have to pick a mauser I mean, uh, you know how many mauser actions i got because i don't three <laughs> <laughs> I, 
add at least a zero behind that. Like nice. I've, I've got dozens of actions. Nice. But um, no, the uh, Australian cadet trainer, the little martini. Okay. Hmm. The little martini cadet. I love those actions. Hmm. Now, I had an original. Uh, I've had a couple of the original, you know, full-length cadets, and they are a pain in the butt. Hmm. Trying to load for 310 cadet <laughs> is, it'll drive you to drink. You know, you, you got to call up old Carbine Williams and be like, hey, man. I need some of that whiskey <laughs> because there it's it's like a thirty two twenty sort of, but it's a completely different bullet. It's a healed bullet. Oh. It's oh, I, I I tried it for a bit and I said to heck with it. Sold the gun and uh, the guy who got it loved it and and he's happy. But I love the action and I've actually I saved one of the actions and it's a uh, building it into a twenty five twenty a little, a little oh, okay. walking woods gun. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah so. So that's 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 my third pick is the martini. I think cadet. I might even have twenty five twenty dice. Yeah, yeah, I've got. A, I think I've got two sets of dice now. Yeah, and uh, and now I've got two rifles. Actually, that was the other thing. I picked up a uh, a Winchester fifty three, uh, which is an old takedown, kind of like a ninety two, okay. twenty five twenty. So mm-hmm. needs a magazine tube. So if any of you has a a ninety two takedown magazine tube floating around that you want to oh, get rid of at the shop tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you'll probably love this next one of mine. It is the <clears throat> Swedish M ninety six Mauser. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Carl oh, Gustav. I love those. Gene just went to his happy place. <laughs> Man, me too. That... There is there is not a better shooting that okay, you've got a great cartridge, the six five yeah. fifty five cartridge. It's kind of like the old school six five Creedmoor, right? Mm-hmm. Except in a new action, better. it's better. Yeah, yeah. But a the, lot better. Yeah. Anyways, that that gun, it was at the old Van Wagenens, mm-hmm. and uh, someone was selling it on consignment, and you know, I just I kept looking at it, fondling it. Finally, I was like, hey, um, see if you would you know, allow you to do a layaway on it because I do want this. I just don't have the cash right now. And so he, the shop guys called the the guy who was selling it on consignment and he said he was okay with it. So I put down, you know, hundred bucks or something. Then I ended up picking it up like later that week. <laughs> Cause I, cause, you know, that's, that's the tricky thing about layaway is you put a little bit of money on and then you're like, oh, I, I should just pick it up. Oh yeah. So yeah. Yeah. But that is a great shooting rifle. Oh, they I are. love it. So, which end up paying? For, uh, so, if it was Van Wagens, that's been what 10, 15 years at least. Yeah. What'd yeah. you end up paying for it back then? I can't remember that much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> my my wife. No, my Your wife, wife listens <laughs> too. Yeah, I got to be careful what she, I say. She only <laughs> listens as you walking by while I edit the podcast. Yeah. You spent what? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's such a nice, a great condition. Oh, so. nice. I was, I was glad I bought and that. And you, you used to be able to get those in really fantastic condition. Yeah, not not so much anymore. No, it's been ages since I saw a really clean Swedish Mauser. Yeah. Okay, Jason. All right, this one, this one's the history behind it I like. I don't like anything else about it. <laughs> it's the Liberator in 45 ACP. Oh, cool. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. So, uh, do you I know don't. what a Liberator Okay, no, so the Liberator it? was a stamped steel. Looks like the Russians made it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Russian children made it. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a stamped steel 45 pistol. It's a single like shot. Super compact. Like you, you eject the cases with a pencil. Yeah. It's got a little door on the bottom was of the. Is it like grip. a little assassin gun or something or what? It was. They dropped them from airplanes over occupied territory for insurgents to use. Yeah. So like the French Resistance. Yeah. You know, it was it was intended for people like that. Yeah. You know, behind enemy oh, lines. Interesting. And, yeah. And it, I mean, it was small. Like the the trigger guard is about. Two millimeters behind the end of the barrel. Yeah, wow. you should look it up. Yeah. Really oh, cool I, I gun. Will, yeah, I will. So, have to take and it. they were super cheap. I think they cost two dollars and ten cents a piece to make. Yeah, hmm. and it would hold in the grip. It would hold like several loose rounds. So and, you're running. Uh, it's like rattle, rattle, rattle. Yeah, you know, yeah. just a little single shot, neat little guns. Yeah, um, and they're 
So I, I looked them up today because I was just curious. I'm like, if I ever did want one of these, they're going for anywhere from 1500 to over 4000 bucks a piece. Oh, geez. There was a company that came out with some reproductions of those. Oh, okay. And they were cheaper. Yeah. They were a few hundred bucks. Yeah. I don't know if they're still available or not, but really neat. Yeah. yeah. So. I thought just the history behind that, that's, that's cool. It's a cool idea. Yeah. I don't think anybody ever used one for anything. Not really. <laughs> Not really. It boosted morale, though. Right. You know, that's really what it was. Made you was feel a like boost. you had something you could do something about it. Yeah. 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 So my fourth one, of course, the Mauser 98 action. Okay. The guns. I thought you would pick that one, so I, I kind of penciled that in as my yeah. not-numbered yeah. one. And, and I've had a bunch of the, the military guns, and they've been fun. But, um, you know, that action is what got me started in gunsmithing. Oh, oh cool. My, the first rifle I ever bought, I was, I was 16, put a gun on layaway. My mom did the paperwork for it. And um, it was an 8mm sporterized Mauser, German, 1940. I still have the gun. Nice. Oh, cool. um, because I, I used military surplus ammo through it and didn't realize that some of that stuff is corrosive yes. as all get out. And uh, cleaned it like I normally would, put it in the closet. Six months later, I couldn't see down the bore. Oh, no. It was so fuzzy. Took it to a gunsmith, and uh, and then the rest is history. Wound up building a, my first custom with that. So <laughs> it, uh, that, that's what got me started on this, on this wonderful sort of <laughs> trail of <laughs> yeah. gunsmithing. So I have a couple of those, and one of them is kind of unique because it has uh, the German eagle stamp on, uh-huh. on it. Yeah, and, uh, cool. yeah, yeah. It's, you know, because a lot of those got scrubbed. Yep, they got. Yeah, and this one was. Yeah, yeah this it, one's got a few of them still on it. Um, they're polished now, but they're not. I didn't scrub them because yeah, it, it, they were deep enough that 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 hurt the the gun. Yeah, so, well, it's, it's kind of a cool part of history. It's, it's part of its history. Yeah. You know? So. Okay, mine. Yeah. <sighs> I felt patriotic, so I picked the O three A three. Oh, rifle. nice. Yeah. Okay. I was kind of battling between the 1917 and the 03A3, but I went with the 03A3. I don't think anybody would have picked a 1917. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of, they're, they're a good action. But yeah, it's a good action, strong. But they're kind of a dog. Yeah. <laughs> but, no offense to anybody that likes them, but, you know. Yeah. So I, I have, I, uh, man, I would say a few years ago, but I think it's been, now that I think back, it's longer than a couple years, so... I bought uh, on one of the surplus sites. They had some that were refinished, but they have like the original military configuration with the mm, sights, okay. the stocks. Yeah. So I think they had uh, who makes those uh, barrels for like the um, Criterion. Yes. Yeah. They I make a so. good barrel. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, got a new barrel, so it's a shooter. Nice. Very nice. Well, I did five, but I did have an M1 Garand on there too. Oh, nice. Almost almost had an M1 Garand a while back, a, a fairly nice one. Yeah? I, I was selling a pistol, and this guy said, hey, you want to trade? And Sure, what do you got? How about an XD? Or You know, I'm like, dude, if you want me to trade, I said, I have a lot of guns. You're going to have to tempt me with something a little more unique than something like that. What about an M1 Garand? Now you have my attention. <laughs> we both thought our guns were worth more than the other guy did. <laughs> and, so you and, never traded? No. Aww. Ultimately, it, it, it just came down to we were both like, you know what? I think I want to keep mine. Yeah, I, I want to yeah. keep mine too. <laughs> and, I, and I still have that pistol. I, and I was like, I'm glad I didn't sell it. Nice. But I would have liked that M1 Garand. I know you would have liked the M1 Garand. You know, I had an M1 Garand. Yeah. And and I've got some cut receivers and barrels and everything. Mm-hmm. And this thing, I got it cheap. It was missing parts. Yeah. Put it together, took it out and shot it, and it shot great. But then I thought, what on earth am I going to do with an M1 Garand? <laughs> I'm not taking this thing, hun. <laughs> It's just going to sit around and collect dust, and I don't just shoot guns for fun anymore. Yeah. So I sold it. Now you're sad. I see tears. Uh, it's it's <laughs> my allergies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I So my M1 Garand is, it's kind of, uh, looks like it went through World War II with the okay. stock and the kind see, of condition. And, and with all of these guns that I've been talking about, 
that's what I would prefer. Not one that's like hammer, like, like a restocked CMP gun. But I would like. I like it to look like it's been through yeah. something. Yeah, that and, it's and got all of my guns, I like that. Yeah. If yeah. they're too clean, I don't want it. Yeah. You know, I because if they're too clean, it's going to look like it went through a war five years after I've I've owned it. Yeah. You know, my my little twenty two Hornet, that sucker's got more dents and dings from the last month <laughs> than it would ever have expected to have gotten in its entire life. <laughs> yeah. So that's if they're too that clean, means you're it's, using it. Yeah. Nothing wrong I, I, with that. It adds to the soul. Exactly. So my uh, my last and final one is a pistol. Good for you. And Interesting. It's, <laughs> yes. It better be a good one, Gene. It's been on my mind a lot recently because of Springfield Armory's newest addition oh, to their stable. That almost made my... That should have made my list. Uh, yeah, so I want an FN high power. Yeah. Not the third gen. I want the early one. Yeah. Does that count as a military surplus, though? Yeah. Yeah. They're still in use by militaries. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I'll let it pass because I like them. <laughs> I believe, um, I think, didn't the French use them? And Everybody used them except us. In, in pretty <laughs> much every European Basically, country if they used Basically, if they used an FAL, yeah, they had the high power, too. Yeah. And there's a lot of countries that still are using the high power. And, yeah. and as they should. Yeah, it's a great gun. There's nothing wrong with that thing. Yeah, I think they're wonderful. I mean, even by today's standards, there's nothing wrong with that thing. Yeah. yeah. Why? Because it was designed by Browning. All right. <laughs> At least mostly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, for, for my next one, I'm going to take what Gene said, you know, about guns being a little too pretty, then he doesn't want them. Uh-huh. And I'm going to totally disagree <laughs> now this one is actually a pair, right? It is a pair of Swiss rifles, the K31 mm-hmm. and the predecessor, the 1911 long rifle. Oh, okay. And Wait, how, so you have seven on your list. I didn't say 98 Mauser allowed. He didn't. He, he, uh, I heard him say it. He was. He was I like. Just, I wish I'd put that on my list, but I'm not going <laughs> to use that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. The Swedish, uh, or Swiss, I always get the Swedish Mauser and the Swiss straight pulls. They're, they're going to be writing you letters? Yeah. But <laughs> the Swiss rifles, man, the they're ones nice. I got, they are probably the best mil- you know, uh, c- uh, condition of any of the surplus rifles I have. Oh, yeah. They cared be, for their guns. Yeah. You you could tell, like, they would always have, like, a little bit of, uh, what would you call it, on the bottom, like the butt. So mm-hmm. they have a, a metal butt plate. A little corrosion. A little bit of... Uh, Not really rust, but yeah. corrosion. And then on the wood, the tip of that wood on the bottom of the, the stock would get a little bit of wear. And that's from sticking their, their guns, you know, leaning it up against a gun rack or whatever it is. Yeah. But those two rifles that I have, the K31 and the 1911 long rifle, man, those are immaculate and they are shooters. And that straight pull action is unique and awesome. Oh, they're sweet. So, and Jason, you've you've been out yeah. shooting with me when a, a couple of different times where mm-hmm. I've shot that, and you know I can take that that rifle out. I especially like the 1911 long rifle, just the extra length it's a of the beast. barrel. Yeah, it's a big gun. But I, I'm I feel like I can shoot that rifle better than any other iron sight rifle like oh long sure. long distance shooting. and those actually have pretty decent sights on them yes the sights you know. are great and also the ammo you i don't think anyone made better surplus ammo than than the swiss yeah they that gp11 ammo holy crap that is can you still great. find that no oh <laughs> <laughs> i have some nice but i only take it out when i want to shoot like past 300 yards okay so those would be my my all-time favorite like if i'm gonna if i could only keep one rifle like a military surplus rifle it would be the 1911 long interesting yeah Hmm. and i probably shot that the most of all my what i find interesting is this is all coming from a country that's supposed to be neutral well that's why their guns are in (laughs) such great condition because they never they never they didn't get used you know anything swiss whether it's Swiss watches, Swiss chocolates, yeah, true. Swiss guns. I have, I have a friend it's, from Switzerland. She she would agree. 
<laughs> I, I had a friend from Switzerland, and and he could be a very annoying rascal. <laughs> I, I loved him, but he was he he was one of my customers when I was a produce manager, and okay. he got on everybody's nerves. And I I just said, you know what, he's he's Swiss. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's how he is, and you just have to. Their cheese has holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> but he was he was very particular. And, you know, and that comes from culture, from culture. You know, yeah. they're very particular about how they want their things. And mm-hmm. they don't they don't want any high points in their country. You oh, know? Yes. Jeez, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I will say we come from a little bit different time than, say, the 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 people who are now turning into adults. Right. They come in. They go to a gun shop and there's no M1 Garand. There's not oh, even yeah. like Mosin Nagants on yeah. yeah, on the shelves or Not really? Yeah, like yeah, I mean, ten years ago, every gun shop had military. Yeah, you had stuff on tons the of SKSs, both yep. the Yugos and the and the Chinese Chinese, ones. Yep. and even Russian ones sometimes. Ooh. And those were like kind of special. Those like, were still special even back then. Yeah, those weren't a hundred bucks. Those were a hundred and twenty-five bucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you know, so so the way. The way we look at these surplus rifles is probably going to be, you know, a little bit different than this next generation. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, and I think, personally, I mean, one of the reasons I got that Swedish Mauser from you, one, it was a deal I couldn't refuse. Yeah, that was a good deal. It was a really good deal. I had to put some money into it afterwards, but that was okay. I knew that going into it. Oh, yeah, that's Swedish Mauser. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember You, you helped yeah. me with the... Yeah, yeah that's a sweet gun. It's, yeah, stuff. for especially the price. Yeah. But one of the reasons I got that and why I wanted it was to preserve that kind of history for my kids. Mm-hmm. So when I'm dead and gone, they can be, look at this cool old gun my dad had. Even if they don't know much about it, they can look it up and they can... Yeah. They'll shoot it. They'll... We'll, we'll get them out with it and stuff. But I think that's... I think that's cool. I like yeah. that. I'll say that the reason, the previous reason why people would buy military surplus rifles is now completely different than what people, or why people would buy them now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Before, years ago, people bought them as a cheap hunting rifle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they were they were accurate enough. They usually shot a cartridge that could take down large game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 30 hot 6 or 7.62 by 54 or, you know, those, those right. big cartridges. And, you know, there weren't cheap savages, Ruger Americans, right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. The Thompson guns centers. were expensive, yeah. except the surplus guns. Yeah. And, and in a and lot of areas, it was cheaper to, you know, to sporterize a military gun. Yeah, you gun. take a military and gun. You chop you know, it up. Chop chop the stock and turn it into a nice sporterized hunting rifle. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's interesting, you know, coming from the south. I saw a lot of sporterized um, Springfields, a lot of sporterized Mausers, um, where they had actually they'd done a nice job of it, where they had you know cut the barrel down, put new sights on it, a new stock, and and they kind of put a little bit of money into it, but it was still cheaper than buying a Winchester mm-hmm. or buying a a Remington or, or whatever else. Right. But then you come out here, and and Utah Utahns are known for being cheap. F- cheap. Frugal. Yeah, I was going to say frugal, but <laughs> nah, they're not. They're not frugal. They're they cheap. are cheap. <laughs> <laughs> like they, <laughs> they're they're past frugal. They're they're just cheap. But they, um, when you see a Springfield out here, it's just had the stock cut. It's still got the sights. It's. They haven't done much to it. They've just cut it down and make it a little, they little just did lighter. The, the minimal effort to get it kind of where yeah. they wanted. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's enough that it makes you mad though. It's yeah. like, Dad, gummit, why'd you have to cut that stock down? You left everything else there, but you cut the stock down, and I can't redo it because the wood's not there. But, yeah, uh, and and also, you know, back then it, it would be a good way to get a very reliable, yeah, semi-auto battle rifle, like with the SKSs. Oh yeah, and the such. SKSs yeah. and all that, yeah. and. I would I know say guys that hunted with their SKSs. Yeah, I knew guys back home that would hunt whitetails with uh, with the M1 carbine. Yeah. Oh, you geez, know? that's like well, close range of saw point bullets. It'll work. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. know, you're shooting a 150 pound deer, maybe. Yeah, they're smaller over there. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so so kind of comparing the the two, you know, the differences between generations. I'd say nowadays there would be no real good reason to walk into a gun shop and buy an old 
military surplus rifle. The Mosin Nagant. <laughs> ex- except for the historical value yeah. and like to collect something that yeah. will no longer be made. Yeah. yeah. It's it's an opportunity to own a piece of history and yeah, yeah. and they're and, and they're good investments. Yeah. You know, cuz when I first saw a, a Swiss K31, mm-hmm. they were a hundred bucks. Oh geez, this would have been have two thousand, <laughs> two thousand, yeah. two thousand one. You know, How would you know? And I thought, you know. my gosh, that's the weirdest gun I've ever seen. And the guy says, it is the best shooting rifle I've ever owned. And I thought, hmm. And I didn't think anything more of it until I saw the prices gone up to four and five hundred dollars. And I thought, my gosh, I should have bought a case of them. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Um, I think now they're about seven hundred, and they're they're going up and up and yeah, up, up, and they're up. going to keep going up because one, <laughs> you can't go back in time and make more. Nope. Yeah. And nope. so as people, you know, lose them, and you know, in disasters like floods, fires, whatever. Yeah. The number of available ones keeps going down. Yeah. So going back to the surplus guns. So right after the Civil War, you know, you had westward expansion. Mm-hmm. Everybody thinks that the, the, the rifle all the buffalo hunters used was the Sharps. It wasn't. It was actually the no, surplus. I saw it in a movie. It was the Sharps. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually the surplus 5070 trapdoors mm. and the 4570 trapdoors. Those were the guns that predominantly were being used by these buffalo hunters. And it wasn't the Sharps and the and the Peabodys and the Remingtons and the... Well, the Sharps back then were like... That they were was big money. top shelf yeah. Yeah. fire you, you had to be somebody to have a Sharps. Right. Your average Joe... And, and you Joe were kicking didn't, around as a buffalo hunter. <laughs> yeah. You you had to be one heck of a good hunter to, to warrant getting that. Yeah. You know, otherwise it's, you know, the, the 5070 trapdoor was perfect. Hmm. It was cheap. You had all kinds of ammo. You you were good. Um, and, you know, it started back then, you know. It yeah. was, you know, even before that, a lot of guys That's kind would, of interesting how they, you know, used for hunting, right? Yeah. The military surplus. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, it'll take a man. It'll take a deer. <laughs> it'll yeah. take a buffalo. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and even, uh, you know, and it wasn't just our country. You know, the Brits. um, you know, all over Africa, India, all these countries, they were using, you know, 303 British for things that we would cringe at the thought of doing now. But, yeah. you know, 303 yeah. British was, was a very common elephant round oh, back geez. in the day. Oh, gosh. Huh. You know, you use a full metal jacket. And then you know, in the right spot. Yeah. Hmm. Worked well enough. It beat having to go to Holland and Holland and <laughs> yeah. getting something really expensive. Uh-huh. So yeah. it's it's just interesting that over time, and, and it's kind of sad that the newest generation, they don't really have the um, the option of, yeah, it, of, it of, ex- of the newest, you know. Yeah. They're not going to go to, you know, Sportsman's Warehouse or Gunny's or wherever and, and pick up a an M4 that's surplus and yeah. take it hunting. That's yeah. what I was just thinking. What what military? So, so if, we've got we've got kids that are yeah. I would say the, the grand, What's, but if if they would just release them because yeah. they have all those. There's a lot of grand grands. still. But, um, but for the for the generation coming up, so oh yeah, somebody like, who's in high school right now in ten years, what military no. surplus guns are going to be available for them? No. Yeah. They're, they're Berettas. Not. Maybe Berettas, but... Well, and they've released a couple of those. Yeah. Have not they? many. Yeah. yeah. Well, like the 1911s, they're still... They're still hung up. They're, yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that are super excited about those, even young young people. Yeah. Um, you know, because there's still a slight connection. They're still... Yeah. They have the chance to meet somebody in their neighborhood. Maybe not a family member, but right. there's somebody in know their town... somebody. Yeah. That was in World War II. Yeah. You know, but... I got guys on my street that were... But they're fewer and far they're between now. You yeah. know, when I was a kid... They're all dying off. Yeah. There was a ton. Yeah. But now there's there's not many. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the Korean guys and the Vietnam era guys, those those are dying off. Yeah. And so, you know, it's it's going to be the Berettas. It's going to be the AR lookalikes to, you know, made to look like a, an yeah. M4. Well, or it's, 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 and even, it's not going to be a genuine yeah. military yeah. service. Yeah, it's not the real so. thing. Right. But, yeah, yeah. people have been... Kind of building the the M sixteen replicas, right. yeah. But it's you know, but brown. it's not this not the same I, thing. I would yeah. like a, a military surplus M nine. I I think it'd be cool I to had have one, a brand new one. And yeah, I 
traded it off within days after I got it. Yeah, and if I and if I came across but now, I want one. <laughs> yeah, and, and I've had the Berettas. I don't like the Beretta. Yeah, but if I got one way. that was, <laughs> if I got one that was an actual military gun, it has the right. gouges, the nicks, the exactly. dings, exactly the wear, exactly mm. the soul. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I I would keep it. Yeah, and that and that's I what I would. But but I would actually for. want that. Yeah. You know, a, a new Beretta? No, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And no. it, I'm, I'm Some, sometime right. you'll have to shoot my my old, uh, you know, surplus single-stack Beretta. Oh. Which one is that? What model is it? Oh, man. I what can't caliber? remember off the top. It's it's 9 millimeter. So I've been It was the predecessor to the 1951. Yeah, then, yeah. Yeah. That's it. The 51. Yeah. Those are cool. They are actually pretty cool. They are pretty so cool. They got the weirdest magazine release, but, yeah. Is that yeah. the heel catch? It's, or is it? It's yeah. right. It's it's like a side release, but it's on the. Oh on the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, really I had weird. I had something that had that. My a Beretta. Shoots, it uh, shoots really well. Yeah, I was looking. I've been looking at a bunch of surplus sites for for guns and stuff, and there's a bunch of Berettas. There's a, a 92 S, mm-hmm. which has it looks like it's set oh, up yeah. that same it way. It has that that rounded trigger guard, and they're they're a very attractive gun. Yeah, I it, thought about it, ordering one of those just for, for kicks, but I, they're cheap. You can get them for yeah. under four hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're they're like police trade-ins and stuff like that from who knows where. Yeah, but there's a bunch of different Beretta models that they all look kind of like the ninety two, but they're all a little bit different. Oh yeah, and most yeah. of those European guns, yeah, they've got weird magazine releases, which yeah. is why they're cheaper yeah. here in the U.S. Yeah, nobody wants them, right? Except for the weirdos. <laughs> and I count myself as one of those weirdos. I like I like yeah. I like oddball stuff. I do too. So yeah. yeah, one of these days we'll have to do like a surplus rifle shoot. I've got I wouldn't say half my collection is surplus rifles, but it's <laughs> I, don't, quite, have, I actually don't have, have many surplus rifles. I right have now. a couple French rifles. Mm, I have really? the, the semi-auto that has the, very the mass. Yes, and I have the bolt action. French rifle, the uh, Mass Thirty Six. Yep, I've always been intrigued by that one. It, they're, they're, I don't know they're why. Interesting, because you're French, French Canadian. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 all right. Well, we are way out of time. That is a bonus episode right there. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's as you can tell. This is a topic that is you know, fun. It's I, fun and passion. Yeah. I. I've got a passion for these historical rifles and well, and it's firearms. probably how we a lot of us got our start. Yeah, you know, my start was with a high point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd change that story. My, my, my start wasn't much better. It was a, a PPK clone by Bursa. <laughs> wow. What was your first gun? My first gun was a uh, what was it? Oh, it was a Marlin Model 60, 22. Okay. My sister bought it for me when I was 12 years old. Yeah. Mine was a gift gun, too. Yeah. I think the first gun I personally bought mine myself was, was... Mine was a gift, too. Huh. That's a good <laughs> cool. thing. That's cool. Yeah. How many guns have, have each of us given away to get others started? I have given... Well, not including, like, my own children, because that doesn't count. Yeah, I mean, that's it a does. given. They're going to they're gonna get it anyway. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I gave my brother one, who okay. was anti-gun. Is he pro-gun now? He is... He understands the culture now and okay. understa- and and is not against it. Oh, good. Yeah, oh, that's good. good. I I was just thinking. I don't think I gave away any, but then I I remembered I gave my sister a twenty two bolt action Savage. Oh, nice. And I I told her I would buy her first gun or give her her first gun. Yeah. But then it was uh, too hard. Like it would cost too much money for me to buy and ship it to her. So I just sent her money and then told her which one to buy locally over there. Oh, nice. <laughs> and uh, so, cool. And that's something that is, it's her first gun, her family's first firearm. It's a little Very cool. 22. And they live out in back east. They were in Connecticut where they couldn't <laughs> shoot. But you then can't they, even look at a gun. They, they moved to Pennsylvania. And, uh, oh, there. So nice. they have land where they can shoot. The previous owners had a little shooting range with backstop set up. So. Nice. So they have their own twenty two rifle now and awesome. Hopefully cool. they'll uh, get some cooler guns in the yeah. future. Yeah. But yeah, that and my dad, it's kinda interesting. I got my first gun from my father in law, mm-hmm. High Point, just yeah. on a whim. He's like, I'm gonna buy all my 
you know, he was at the local department store. Or, <laughs> yeah. Or, or yeah. IFA oh, yeah. Or something. It was kind of, it's this weird store. It's called Griggs. If you ever go to the Tri Cities in Washington, yeah. you got to stop by Griggs. It's the weirdest store. It's like a 1980s, 1970s department store. Okay. <laughs> that still exists. Interesting. <laughs> and. Yeah. Do they still have surplus guns in the back? Not surplus. Oh, okay. They have, yeah, he thought that would be kind the of the white fun. tube stocks with the big yellow and red Oh, stripes. probably. I'm sure they have Just like the ones Jean's wearing. Yeah. Oh, you don't have the stripe. No, but, but. those are wool. So yeah. these actually came out of that gun shop that I bought out down in Richfield. <laughs> <laughs> like, pair of socks. like literally like a 55 gallon drum worth of wool socks <laughs> oh my goodness they're, they're plain white excellent okay and i was thrilled uh, well that is yeah. like we are way over time so eh, who makes the rules well you're editing this one i so. know that's why you oh. gotta go along I, yeah, I, i'm watching the time it's like guess, eh. guess what <laughs> anyway okay <laughs> until next time stay safe have fun and give someone a gun yeah take them shooting and go look for a military surplus rifle or handgun you should yes it's absolutely your patriotic duty I guess it doesn't have to be American no but definitely definitely look at some yeah but we'll follow you home Who's Briefly? Huh? To the sponsors. Briefly, NOE, Black Ice, Utah. It's to remind us to it's oh, brief. dwell on Be fly brief. forever. Okay. Free <laughs> fly. <laughs> All right. We ready? Yeah. Yeah. One ten. Do you remember where you are? I was trying to think what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> the Concealed Taco Dudes. Yes. Yes.